We're joined by Craig Snyder, president and CEO of the World Affairs Council of Philadelphia. Craig, great to have you here on set. So Iran cares about money. The Iranian regime wants to save the economy, stay in power, but can the European signatories, China and Russia, actually guarantee it without the United States being side of the deal? Seems very unlikely. I, what we're seeing here, I think, is the, uh, the, 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 the often reported decline of American power and influence in the world, both economically and politically, was premature. Uh, we're seeing here how difficult it is when the United States is on one side of a position for even the other great powers of the world to be on the other side. This is very, very challenging, maybe impossible uh, for them to do, given the seriousness uh, that uh, the Trump administration, uh, particularly Secretary uh, Pompeo, has now announced uh, in terms of these sanctions. Even something like uh, Iran's demand that um, European powers continue to buy their oil, buy their crude, is that something that is a no-no as far as the Trump administration is considering? Uh, well, we, it, the, the, the full extent of the, of the Trump administration's position with respect to, to Europe and secondary sanctions is not publicly clear. Uh, but, the, but the rhetoric that's been used publicly so far is very strong, and it would indicate that if you were a European business person, uh, you would have real cause for concern about operating in Iran. And that's what's happening already. In fact, it even happened before uh, Trump officially pulled out of the deal that European companies, including in the oil sector, have pulled back in anticipation of what the United States ha might do, even before the United States has actually done it. So Iran, they're now giving uh, this deadline to the European signatories, but they also somewhat find themselves in, in, in a catch because on one side, they if they go back to enriching uranium, then they lose the support from the European signatories, right? But if they do not do so, they will lose their only card going against the U.S. And withdrawing the deal on Iran's side without going back to enriching uranium, that's a win-win for President Trump. So what can they do? Well, I, I mean, this, the Supreme Leader's statement uh, within the last couple of days um, at least is clear on the face of it. Whether they follow it, we'll see. But they, they have said that they will go back to enriching uranium if these economic guarantees are not provided. And, and it seems unlikely that these economic guarantees can be provided. So this, this could be a kind of a ruse. Uh, uh, to set the stage for resuming uh, the nuclear activities. Um, what may be the most significant part of all of this, though, is the fact that the United States is on one side of this. Our European allies, the Russians and the Chinese, are collectively on the other side. This is great news for Vladimir Putin, uh, who uh, one of his main goals in, 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 in uh, the strategy of the world, really, is to separate the United States from Europe. And in this case, we're doing it ourselves. As far as uh, Iran and whether this is a ruse or not, and despite the threats to actually go ahead and start enriching uranium again if there's no deal with Europe, do you think that they actually would move forward with that, assuming that Europe's not able to come up and meet their demands? Um, it's, it's, it, it's impossible to know for sure. My own view is that they will. Uh, is that is that uh, they need to be they need to honor the threat so to speak in order to have the credibility that they want in the broader international negotiation and then that kicks it back over to the United States and Israel in terms of a possible military option to stop them it certainly puts it back on the table and of course that was President Obama's thinking uh, to begin with in negotiating the deal uh, originally uh, that uh, that, a, that, a, that the military option is both dangerous and potentially not workable, uh, and therefore uh, he felt that this, uh, this uh, compromise, so to speak, where we only limited nuclear activities, we didn't limit ballistic missiles or other foreign policy adventurism, that that was worth taking sort of half the loaf. Um, the whole loaf is now back on the table. The Secretary Pompeo is saying we're going to pursue it across the board, uh, but we can't do it without getting the Europeans to come back our way. Mm -hmm. Craig, how do you read Pompeo's statements? Because some do Im interpret it as a call for regime change in Iran, although the Secretary himself, he stated that it's not one of the U.S.'s uh, objectives in Iran. Well, I, I think the, you know, sort of the, 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 uh, the not-so-secret desire of uh, what people would call the hawks in the administration would be to see a different regime in Iran, and it has been that way uh, for decades. Uh, but it's not, it's not the stated purpose. The stated purpose uh, is to limit certain particular activities, ballistic missiles, uh, activity in Syria and Lebanon and so on. It is possible, not likely, but it's possible that the Iranians uh, could... Uh, uh, avoid uh, U.S. efforts for regime change, uh, could in fact maybe even get a guarantee from the United States uh, about uh, not trying to have regime change if they would alter these other behaviors.
Problem is, these other behaviors are key to their sense of, of national purpose, uh, of the purpose of the regime. I want to ask another um, hypothetical in terms of how the scenario plays out. Let's just suppose Iran starts enriching uranium. The United States has also threatened from President Trump and Pompeo there would be even more severe consequences if they did that. Yeah. So on top of whatever sanctions the United States has tried to reimpose, does that put the United States on the hook in order to either take some sort of military action or what could they possibly do short of that after having said do not enrich uranium again? Well that is, uh, I think you've, you've hit on sort of the key question. So people who maybe didn't love the deal, the Obama deal to begin with, uh, but who opposed President Trump pulling out of it, the argument they made was what do you do next? It's easy to pull out, but how do you enforce change on the Iranians, um, even if you have cooperation from Europe, but especially if you don't? So I think you've raised really the key question, which is what are the policy levers, the additional policy levers uh, that are available to try and enforce a hard line on Iran? And it's not clear what those things are, short of military action, which people understand on all sides of the issue, to be potentially catastrophic. This is a, a major power. Uh, in, 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 in the region, perhaps uh, in some ways even in the world, with an 8,000 year history of civilization, a proud people. Um, the one thing that might in fact rally popular support for the Iranian regime among the Iranian people would be a strike from outside. Mm. So there's a, there is a, there's, there's a lot of danger that's been put in play here by the decision uh, from the president. Doesn't mean the decision was wrong, but it means that you have to be prepared sort of to carry out the consequences. Craig Snyder, president and CEO of the World Affairs Council of Philadelphia. Craig, great to have you in studio. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. It. Great to be here. Still ahead on